Okay, what's up everyone? This is Scott here again with a brand new video to help you learn how to trade, invest, and master your finances so you can apply that knowledge in the real world and multiply your money. And welcome to my next installment of my live option trading series where I show you all the trades and all the adjustments I made over the past trading week. Now this video here is going to be a bit different because I will be traveling tomorrow, which will be Friday, October 15th, and as a result, I will not be able to do any recording. So that means for this video here, it's only gonna show you the trades and adjustments I made between Monday through Thursday, which is today, the time I'm recording this video. And so as you can see here, earlier today, I did make quite a few trades, mostly just taking off positions. And that was the main theme for this week. I took off most of my positions because a lot of them are expiring tomorrow on Friday. And so I wanted to get them off the table today and also a bit earlier this week. So that way I don't have to deal with any of them tomorrow while I'm traveling. And so a bit later in this video, you're gonna see a clip that I recorded from this morning that will go over all these trades as I made them in real time. And as you will see throughout this video, the positions I did take off this week, I believe there was five in total, most of them were actually pretty complex positions. In particular, Alibaba definitely was, also EWZ, NUE, and then also JD that I took off, I believe, on Tuesday. And so that's gonna be a good demonstration for you guys to see in terms of how I took off these positions, and then more importantly, how I compute all the numbers between the initial position, all the adjustments I made, and the losses I took from having to use the stock as a hedge to ultimately figure out the final profit or loss on each trade. Now, as always, before we fully dive in here, in case you are brand new to the channel, I just wanna let you know that you can also find me on Skillshare as well, where you can take my very in-depth classes on options trading or stock market investing. And I provided some links to some of the introductory courses of mine in the description of this video below. So be sure to check them out. And when you sign up for Skillshare using any of those links, you'll get a full one month free trial. And so with that said, I'm gonna stop here and play a few clips that I recorded from this past week and also earlier this morning that will show you in real time how I took all these trades off and did all the number crunching in the end. And we're gonna start things off here with my JD position. Okay, today is Monday, October 11th, and there is one thing I want to do here today, and that is I'm gonna take off my JD position for a very small loss. Now this one here I have had on for quite some time. It started out as simply a naked short call option, but over the course of this expiration cycle, I have had to make many adjustments to this position, specifically rolling down my call option, rolling up my puts, buying 100 shares of stock, etc. So again, what was initially a simple naked call option has now turned into a short straddle. As you can see here, I'm short both the 75 strike put and also the 75 strike call. And then because this stock is currently above my call strike, that's why I'm also long 100 shares of this stock. Now the expiration date for both of these contracts is this Friday on October 15th. So if we come to the trade tab here, as you can see, there's only four more days left to go in this cycle. So I could wait these next four days and squeeze out a very small profit by Friday. But because I already have a very similar position in Alibaba, which is also a Chinese stock in the online retail space, I do want to go ahead here and remove some risk, right? Because JD and Alibaba both move in very similar ways to each other. So again, by taking off some risk here in JD and booking a very small loss of about maybe 20 to 30 bucks, I'm going to one, free up a lot of capital in my account, and then two, I'll still have my Alibaba position on. I'm gonna keep that one for a few more days at least because that one still has some sizable losses that I'm still trying to make back. So first thing I'm gonna do here is buy back both of these contracts at the same time. So I'm gonna right click and go to buy and then straddle. And that brings up the order down here. As you can see, buy one contract, 75 strike call option, and then also buy one contract, 75 strike put option. And right now the fair price for buying back both of these contracts is about 450 bucks. I'll come up a few pennies, see if I can get filled very quickly here. Go to confirm and send, and then send. And there we go, just got filled at 452, very nice. So now the final step here is to sell the stock I currently own. So I'll come up here and click on the current price of JD and go to sell. That brings up the sell order down below to sell 100 shares of stock. And the bid ask prices here are basically one penny wide. So I'm just gonna go ahead and hit confirm and send and send. And there we go, just got filled at $78.58. So now I'm completely out of my JD position. So at this point, let's figure out how much those losses actually amounted to on that position. So to make this easy, I'm gonna go ahead and pull up the calculator now. And let's move this right there. 
So many weeks ago when I first put on this JD position, as I said, it started out as simply a short naked call option. In particular, I believe at the 82 and a half strike. And I sold that call option for $330 in credit. Now over the course of this trade, JD stock did bounce through my short call strike a few times, which forced me to have to buy 100 shares of the stock and then sell them, buy them again, sell them again, etc. each time for small losses. Right, specifically just to give you a visual, let's come to the charts real quick here and I'll zoom in. So as I explained, that first call option I sold was at the 82 and a half strike, which is right around here. And so back in this zone around early September, this was when JD stock did pierce through my call strike quite a few times. And so I did face some losses from again having to buy and sell the stock multiple times, which forced me to have to sell a put option down below to take in extra credit as compensation for those small losses on the stock. And I believe the strike of that put option was somewhere around the 72 strike. And then of course, a bit later, as you can see here, JD did sell off pretty hard and fall below my put strike. And it did bounce through that put strike a few times, which therefore forced me to have to short the shares, then buy them back, short them again, buy them back, again, causing me to lose a little bit of money every time. So ultimately through all the adjustments I had to make, selling put options and then rolling down my calls and then eventually rolling up my put to eventually have a short straddle at the 75 strike. Through all those adjustments, I took in an extra credit Let's bring back the calculator here. The additional credit I collected from all those adjustments amounted to $347. So that brings my total credit on this position to 677. Now the losses I faced from the stock from either having to cover my short call option or cover my short put option, those losses amounted to $583. And so that left a total net credit left on the position of 94 bucks. Now, as you just saw, let's come back to the monitor tab real quick here and bring back the calculator. As I just showed you, I bought back both of these contracts, the 75 strike call and also the 75 strike put option for a total debit of $452. So we subtract from this 452. And so far that creates a loss of $358. But don't forget the final step here, which was also the fact that I was long 100 shares of the actual stock and I just sold those shares as well and did so for a nice profit. Now I'm gonna go ahead and clear the screen here on the calculator, but don't forget this number, 358. I'll need this number for the final calculation. So go ahead and clear the screen. Now when I made the final adjustment to this position and changed both my call strike and my put strike to both be at 75, right after I did that, that's when I also bought 100 shares of the stock. And I bought those shares at a price of $75.30. So of course that costs money, right? And then today I just sold those shares for a profit at a price of $78.58. So we add to this 78.58, and that's a profit of $3.28 per share times the 100 shares. That's a total profit of $328. Now, finally, the last step here is to subtract that 358 bucks I lost from having to buy back the options for a pretty hefty debit. So we subtract 358 and the final result is a loss of only $30. And like I said at the beginning of this clip, if I did hold this position all the way until Friday and also if nothing more went wrong, then I could have squeezed out a small profit of about 60 bucks. But in my opinion, holding the risk on this trade for another few days was not worth making a profit of only about $60. And again, because I do also have a very similar position in Alibaba, which you can see right here, that's why I was comfortable just removing some risk and taking a loss of only $30. It's not a big deal. And I did actually forget one final, final thing, and that is I do need to cancel my stock buying and selling orders on JD, which you can see right here. So these orders I always have in place to buy and sell the stock should the stock breach my call strike or my put strike. So that way I don't have to be just glued to my screen and have to watch the charts tick by tick and buy and sell the shares by hand. These orders here basically automate that process. So last step is to go to the working order, which you can see right here. This is the order that is currently active and I can just right click on it and cancel it. And that cancels all the orders that are dependent on it. And so there we go. Too bad that my JD position could not turn into profits at some point. But sometimes when you have a situation where you can take a very, very small loss and you have good reason to do so, that might be the best choice. So hopefully this clip here gave you some good insight into all that. And I also wanted to give you a good demonstration of all the number crunching that I do with my style of trading. 
All right, today is Thursday, October 14th, and today is going to be the last day I'll be trading for this week. And that's because I will be traveling tomorrow. And so that means any position I have on right now, and there's quite a few of them that do expire tomorrow for the October expiration date, I'm going to go ahead and take them off today. And we'll start first with my Alibaba position. And like I was saying in the previous clip, this is a very similar position to what I had on in JD. I've had to make many adjustments to this position by either rolling down my call options or rolling up my puts for extra credit. Because just like with JD, this stock has bounced through my call strike and my put strike quite a few times, causing me to lose money, and hence all the adjustments, until the point where I now have on a short straddle. As you can see, both the call and the put have the same strike. And because Alibaba is above my call strike right now, that's why I'm also long 100 shares of this stock. And so now let's go to the trade tab here, and I already have the option chain for Alibaba pulled up. Again, as you can see, I am in the October expiration cycle for this position, only one day left to go, but I am gonna go ahead and take it off right now. Now, if I did hold this position all the way to tomorrow, to the market close specifically, then yes, I could squeeze out a bit more extrinsic value from these contracts and walk away with a smaller loss. This position is going to be a loss no matter what I do, but at this point, there is so little extrinsic value remaining in these contracts that I'm still okay with taking this one off right now and having a slightly larger loss but it's still gonna be pretty small as you'll see here in a second. So let's go ahead and right click on the call option here and go to buy and then straddle. And there we go, you can see down here, here's the order. Gonna buy back one contract of the 157 and a half strike call option. And then same thing, one contract also for the 157 and a half strike put option. And for the limit price, I'll come up to maybe 840, see if I can get filled very quickly here, confirm and send and send. And there we go, just got filled and price improved to 821, very nice. And so now the final step is to sell the 100 shares that I'm still currently long. So I'll go to sell, and then down here, here's the order. And the bid and ask spread are very tight for the actual stock here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and confirm and send and send. And there we go, just got filled at 165.19. So there we go, I am now officially out of my Alibaba position. Thank God, this one was definitely a pain in the ass for a long time. And now let's quickly figure out the losses I took on that position. And so just like before, let's bring up the calculator here. Now at the very beginning of this Alibaba position, I sold a short strangle at the 190 strike call option and the 150 strike put option. And I sold those two contracts for $691 in credit. And then as I explained, the stock did bounce through my call strike and my put strike quite a few times, which forced me to have to buy the stock or short the stock, etc., and lose a little bit of money every time I did that. And there were also some pretty nasty gap moves over my strikes that caused me to lose a lot more money than I would like to. And so the total losses I took on the stock amounted to $1,145. So I subtract $1,145, and so far that creates a loss of $454. But as I also explained, along the way, as I was losing money with the stock, I was also making a lot of adjustments to the position to take in extra credit. And those adjustments were basically me rolling down my call option and rolling up my put option until I had a short straddle on, where both the call and the put had the same exact strike. And the total additional credit I was able to collect from making all those adjustments amounted to $639. So we add 639, and now I still have a total net credit on the position of 185. Now, as you just saw this morning, I bought back both of the options, the call and the put, for a total debit of $821. So now we subtract from this, 821. And now as a result, I'm back to being down by $636. But finally, the last step is to figure out the profits I made from buying the stock, right? Once I changed my strikes to the point where I had a short straddle on, I either had to be long 100 shares of Alibaba if the stock was above my short strike, or if Baba was below the short strike, I would have to be short 100 shares. And so for the past few days, this stock has been above the strike, which is why I have been long 100 shares of the stock. And now the price I bought those shares for initially, I'm gonna go ahead and clear the screen here, but don't forget this number, 636. The price at which I bought those shares was $160.12. So of course, ideally, I would want to buy the stock if it went above my short strike and also buy the stock as close to my strike price as possible at 157 and a half. So this here was a case where the stock did actually gap over my strike one morning, and the best price I could get filled at was this price right here, 160.12.
but this is not a huge deal because I did still make a profit on the stock. So if I bought the shares at 160.12 and I sold them this morning for 165.19, I can add to this 165.19, and that means I made a profit of $5.07 per share times 100 shares. That's a $507 profit. And so now the last step is to subtract the $636 I lost from all the previous calculations and that means in the end, I'm going to walk away from this Alibaba position with a $129 loss, plus a few extra bucks in commissions. And like I was saying earlier, if I did hold this position all the way until the market closed tomorrow, then yes, this loss would be smaller. I would expect the loss in that case to be about 70 bucks, not 130 But obviously, the difference there is pretty small. And so taking the position off today and booking a slightly larger loss is not a big deal to me. Although if I was not traveling tomorrow, then sure, I might have held this position all the way until the end of tomorrow. But I still think this is a pretty good demonstration of having good defense mechanics, knowing what to do when the position moves against you, while still may lead you to a losing scenario, but definitely a very small and manageable losing scenario. Especially when you consider the other positions I'll be taking off today because they do expire tomorrow as well. All those other positions will be profitable, I believe, and they will definitely more than cancel out the losses I took on Alibaba today, this morning. Okay, so now let's move on to my EWZ position. This one is also very similar to my JD and Alibaba position. This one started out as simply a naked put option, but I did have to sell some calls and then roll down those calls all the way until I now have a short straddle on at the 33 strike. And then also because this ETF is currently below my short strike of 33, that's why I'm also short 300 shares of the ETF, right? And just very briefly here, let's come to the charts real quick and we'll go to EWZ, already have it pulled up. Let's zoom in a bit. And so this one here is gonna be a good demonstration of how you can be totally dead wrong on a position directionally and still walk away with some profit, right? Again, my strikes are at 33 right there. And at the time I put on this position, EWZ was right around here, I believe right around the support level I drew in in red. And my assumption was that EWZ was going to bounce off that point and continue higher. But obviously, as you can see, I was 100% completely dead wrong. I did get the very short term bounce I was looking for. But soon after that, everything just kind of collapsed. But thanks to all the adjustments I made to this position and also shorting shares of the ETF, like I said, I can still walk away from this trade with a small profit. So we'll come back to the monitor tab here. Actually, excuse me, we'll go to the trade tab. And here we go. This is the option chain for EWZ, October cycle expiring in one day. And so I'm first going to go ahead and buy back all these contracts. And once that is done, then I will buy back all the shares that I have shorted. So I'll right click here, go to buy and then straddle just like before. And for this one, I'm going to buy back three contracts. And for my price here, I'll come up to maybe 69. See if I can get filled pretty quickly here. Go to confirm and send and send. And there we go, just got filled at 68, nice. And so now last step is to go here and click on the buy button now. And now I'm gonna buy back all 300 shares of this ETF and the price looks good here. Go to confirm and send and send. There we go, just got filled at 32.58, all done. So very briefly, just like before, let's come back to the monitor tab and figure out the total outcome, the total P&L of this EWZ position. So we'll bring back the calculator here and clear the screen. Now, a while ago, I sold just the 33 strike put options, nothing else, for a total credit of $111 each, $111 per contract. So that means because I sold three contracts, I multiply this by three. So my total beginning credit on this position was $333. Now, as I showed you on the charts there, there were many times where this ETF fell below my put strike and then bounced back above it, fell back below it again, etc. And so that's why I had to repeatedly short and buy back the shares over and over and over again until the point where recently I shorted the shares and now EWZ has remained below my strike for quite some time. But there was definitely still a brief moment where this ETF was fighting for a while trying to not go lower. And again, it was just bouncing through my put strike many, many times. And so the total losses I took from having to short and buy back the shares multiple times amounted to $204. And so that leaves a remaining net credit on the position of only 129. And so just like with Alibaba, just like with AD, that means along the way, as I was losing money from the stock, I was also making adjustments to this position by first selling call options against my short puts, and then over time, rolling down my call options further 
to collect more and more credit until I had a short straddle on. And the total additional credit I collected amounted to $225. So that brings my total net credit back up to 354, which is greater than where it even started. Pretty cool. So the next step is to look at the debit I bought back the contracts for, which you can see right here. I bought back each straddle for a debit of $68. So that means in total, the total debit I paid to buy back all these contracts was $204, just 68 times three. So I subtract from this 204, and that brings my total credit down to 150. And now the last step is to take a look at the P&L on the stock position. And so as I explained, because EWZ is below my strikes, that's why I've been short 300 shares of this ETF. But unfortunately, when I shorted those shares, I got filled at a very bad price. Again, because the stock did gap down overnight and the next morning it opened well below 33. So I'm gonna go ahead and clear the screen here, but don't forget this number, 150, okay? So the price I got filled at when I shorted those shares was $32.39. And then as you can see this morning, I bought those shares back for a worse price of $32.58. Right, Because when you short shares of stock, you want to buy them back for an even lower price than where you shorted them at. So unfortunately, I subtract from this $32.58, and that means I lost $0.19 cents per share. And then times the 300 shares I shorted, that's an overall loss of $57. Not a huge deal. And that's because, don't forget, I still have $150 bucks of total credit remaining on the position. So finally, the last step is I add to this that 150, and in the end, I still walk away with a profit of 93 bucks. So that's awesome. Now, let's get out of my NUE short strangle. And this one's also gonna be for a profit, even though I was completely dead wrong directionally on the position. So we'll come to the charts real quick here and go to NUE. And for this one here, this trade did start out as a short strangle. And specifically, it began at the 140 strike call option, which is way, way up here. You can't even see it on my chart. And then also at the 110 strike put option. But obviously, as you can see here, over the course of this entire trade, NUE has simply just moved lower. And this stock has been below my put strike of 110 for the better part of three or four weeks now. It's been a very long time. So just like EWZ, if I did nothing on this position, no defense tactics, I would be down a lot of money on this trade. But over the course of this expiration cycle, I did make one adjustment. I did roll down my call option a little bit, took in some extra credit when I did so. And then also I've been short 100 shares of the stock ever since it's been below 110. So with that said, we'll come to the trade tab here and close this one out. Let's scroll down. And wow, you can see here with this call option, it's basically trading for almost zero. There is practically no extrinsic value remaining in this contract. And for the put option here at the 110 strike, my guess is this is mostly almost 100% intrinsic value at this point. So with that said, we're going to right click here and go to buy and then strangle this time. This is not a straddle. I did not have to make that many adjustments to this position here. And so I'm gonna buy back one contract of the 120 strike call option. Again, I rolled down my call from the 140 strike to the 120 strike a while ago. And then also buy back one contract of the 110 strike put option, which is right there. And for my price, I'll come up to maybe 700 bucks, see if I can get filled there, confirm and send, and send. And nothing yet, so let's come back to the monitor tab and check out the order here. And so there we go, you can see the order right here. And the mark price is still shown as being less than my limit price, but because my put option is so far in the money, chances are the bid ask spread on that option is a bit wide right now. And oh, there we go actually, just got filled at 695. So very quickly before I continue talking about that here, let's come back to the trade tab and buy back the 100 shares of stock that I'm still currently short. So there we go, here's the buy order, price looks good, confirm and send, send, and there we go, 103.32. So as I was saying, because this put option is so far in the money, as you can see the bid ask spread here is 40 cents wide, which is a pretty large amount, and this is what happens when your options do go pretty far in the money. And that's simply due to the fact that far in the money options are much less traded than either at the money options or out of the money options to some extent, right? It's typically the options in this zone right here that are the most heavily traded. And so again, the less traded your contracts actually are, the wider the bid ask spreads are typically going to be. And therefore it's gonna be more and more difficult to get filled if you're either buying or selling this option 
for a good price. And so there we go. Let's come back to the monitor tab now and figure out the final outcome of that trade. So I'll bring back the calculator again. Now for that trade, my initial starting credit was 470 bucks. And again, that was for selling the 140 strike call option and the 110 strike put option. Now there was also a small moment of time where the stock did bounce through my put strike a few times as it was trending lower. So I did have to short the shares and then buy them back a few times for small losses. And the total amount of those losses was $203. So that left a net credit remaining on the position of only $267, which is why I made that adjustment to roll down my call option and take in extra credit. And when I made that adjustment, I took in an extra credit of $105, which brings my total credit back to $372. And then, as I just showed you, I bought back both of my contracts, the 120 strike call option and the 110 strike put for a total debit of $695. So we subtract from this, $695. And now that brings me down to minus $323. But of course, the final step is to figure out the profit or loss on this stock position. So once again, I'm going to clear the screen here, but don't forget this number, 323. And so the last time I had to short 100 shares of NUE, the price I got filled at was $108.32. So ideally, I would want to get filled as close as possible to my put strike of 110, but this was another situation where the stock did gap down below my put strike overnight and 108.32 was simply the best price I could get filled at. But definitely not a big deal because I bought those shares back at a much lower price this morning, as you saw, for $103.32. So we subtract from this, 103.32, and that means I made a profit of exactly $5 per share, times 100 shares, that's a total profit of 500 bucks. And so that means in the end, when I subtract the 323, I lost from the earlier calculations, the net result is I still made a profit of $177. Very nice. And now there is just one more position to go, and that is my Las Vegas Sands short strangle. Now this trade here is a bit more simple. As you can see, I am not long or short any shares of this stock, and I also did not make any adjustments to this position. I'm still short the same 36 strike put option and the 44 strike call that I was short initially when I first put on this trade. And as you can see, I sold two contracts each. Now I did still lose some money from the stock bouncing through my put strike quite a few times. We'll come to the charts real quick here and go to LVS. And so zooming in, specifically in this area right here, keeping in mind my put strike is at 36. So as you can see, there are many times where this stock did bounce through 36, which forced me to have to short the shares and then buy them back for small losses each time. But I still did not lose enough money to actually require me to make an adjustment on this position to take in extra credit, which is nice. So the calculations for this one should be very easy. But first, of course, we have to come back to the trade tab here and get out of this position. So I'm gonna right click on the call option here and go to buy and then strangle. And so I'm gonna buy back two contracts each of the 44 strike call option and then also the 36, which you can see right there, the 36 strike put option. So back down here, the 36 strike put right there. And wow, that's pretty incredible. The total debit on each strangle is only $5. So of course, I could wait until tomorrow and squeeze out an extra five bucks per strangle, but I definitely don't mind taking the position off right now. And in fact, I'll come up to six. Let's see if I can get filled very quickly here. Confirm and send, send. And there we go. Just got filled at exactly six bucks per contract or per strangle. So there we go, I'm now out of my Las Vegas Sand Strangle. And one last time, we'll come back to the monitor tab here and figure out the final outcome of that trade. So I'll bring back the calculator. So initially when I put on that position, I sold those contracts for 170 bucks per strangle. So times the two strangles, my initial starting credit was $340. And then as I explained, I did lose some money from having to repeatedly short and buy back the stock. And the total losses on that amounted to $180. So that brings my total net credit down to only 160, which is only a few bucks below my initial profit target at the beginning anyway. And again, that's why I did not feel the need to make any adjustments to this position. And then finally, the last step here is simply to factor in the price I bought these contracts back for, which as you saw was $6 per strangle or 12 bucks in total. So finally, I subtract from this 12 and that means the final result is a profit of $148. Very nice. 
And so there we go. I'm now officially out of all my October positions that are expiring tomorrow. And lastly here, let's figure out the total profit or loss from all those positions I just took off this morning. So obviously with Las Vegas Sands, I made a profit of 148. And so then we'll add to this the profit I made on NUE, which was 177, which means I'm up to 325 bucks of profit. Then we add to this the $93 I made on EWZ, and that brings me up further to 418. And then lastly, we subtract the loss I took on Alibaba, which was 129. So in the end, the final outcome of all these October trades that I took off this morning was still a profit of $289. Totally awesome. And actually, we can still factor in the loss I took on my JD position, but I do recall in that position, I took a loss of about 32 bucks, I believe. So there we go. For the week, for all the October positions I took off this week, the final outcome was still a profit of $257. And so in particular with those JD and Alibaba positions, I hope this illustrates how important it is to have good defense, right? Because if my losses on JD or Alibaba or both went out of control, then chances are I would actually have a net loss for the week, right? You can still have, you know, 10 winning trades that make a lot of money by themselves. But if you have one really bad losing trade that you manage poorly, then all your profits could be completely wiped away. And that's why, in my opinion, your defense is more important than your offense. And so now with all that being done, I now have a lot of capital freed up in my account, which is great because if I go to the market watch tab very briefly here, and if I sort these stocks by their implied volatilities, take a look at all the earnings dates that are coming up very, very soon. And most of these earnings announcements are coming up in mid to late October. So with all the free capital I now have available, I can now start getting ready for all the earnings trades on the horizon. And so with that being said, that's going to conclude this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And please let me know your thoughts or if you have questions in the comment section below. And don't forget, if you want to take some very in-depth classes on options trading or stock market investing, then check out my Skillshare courses. Links in the description of this video. And finally, if you enjoyed this video, then please give it a thumbs up, drop a comment, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. I drop new videos every single week, and you don't want to miss out. So thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.